And I don't know if you can see that, but we have some serious smoke escaping from the Bosch. Hey YouTube, tonight we are gonna to revisit one of my favorite types of tools, and that is the multi-chuck drill driver. All right, so for starters, I already have full reviews of the Milwaukee M12 and of the DeWalt 5-in-1 on my channel that you can go back and watch for a slightly longer dedicated review to those individual tools. Um, we are gonna be covering just some basics here today, but I just wanna give some flavor for what these tools are like and how they're best used. So let's cover some of the benefits and some of the drawbacks of these and let's go over it in detail. All right, so first the benefits, especially of the Milwaukee and the DeWalt is they are small and lightweight and they really are just nice and ergonomic. So when you're going to be doing stuff around your house or you're going to be assembling something or even getting into the professional of doing some sort of install work or assembly work for a job, unlike an impact driver, which can be small and compact, this doesn't have the loud noise associated with that. It is at the end of the day, just a drill driver. So let's cover pros and cons of each one. All right, so for starters, we're gonna cover the Milwaukee M12 fuel installation drill driver. This tool is the one that started it all for me. It was announced back in 2019. I got my hands on it and it quickly became kind of my go-to Milwaukee drill. Things I love about it is the hand position. You really can just kind of slot your hand in there and it makes it very ergonomic for driving in different fasteners, especially smaller precise fasteners. The magnet on the front is really nice and it does allow you to store an extra couple of bits there or to put a screw there if you're up on a higher position on a ladder and you're trying to do something. The actual chucks click on very easy. There's just this little ring right here that you pull back and once you pull that back, it actually will allow it to be adjusted and put in any possession. This is actually the 3 8 inch all metal chuck the quarter inch hex collet, the right angle attachment actually does allow you to position it exactly where you want within those 16 positions. And it does give you pretty much any angle that you need. Um, I really do like this attachment method, probably the best. It seems to be the most fluid. And then lastly, you do have the offset check, which is going to make it so you can get up close into corners without having something that's going to be spinning and marring the surface there. I'm really excited for Milwaukee's new high output batteries that are going to allow you to get a little bit more power or a little bit more uh, energy out of them in the same size. So that 2.5 I think will fit great on here because it'll preserve the balance, but it'll give you a little bit more oomph for whatever you're doing. All right, so now as we step over to the DeWalt 12 volt extreme five in one drill driver, I think is the name, it's got a heck of a name, but basically it's the same thing, but the DeWalt version in their new extreme brushless 12 volt lineup. This 12 volt is a big upgrade to what they had before. Gives you a lot better power and some great ergonomics. Now the connection to the different chucks is actually very similar to the Milwaukee. The one thing I will say is there is a lot more plastic on the DeWalt, which does allow it to be a lower weight, but that doesn't necessarily give you the best impression of it. Now they're by no means feel cheap, it, they are good plastics and everything. I just like that the Milwaukee went for the all metal there, it gives it a little more premium feeling. And it just does give you a little bit of confidence that if we're to take a little bit of fall, it's probably gonna be okay. Um, 3 8 inch uh, check, just like the other one. And then very similar, you have the quarter inch hex. Now the one thing I will say about the Milwaukee is you see me struggle a little bit there to get it on is it just doesn't seem to fit quite as nice as what the Milwaukee is. And it might loosen up with time. To be honest, with having multiple of these, I just haven't gotten as much use out of this as you would if this is your only drill. Um, but it does the exact same kind of thing that you have with the Milwaukee. It has the same four attachments. They work very similar. Now DeWalt, like I said, has just barely been investing in their 12 volt lineup to a degree where I think it is now a viable product line for you to go into, especially if you just have light duty stuff you wanna do. It's got great power, and it's very ergonomic and great size. And so I do like to see them investing in it and dedicating more to it. They did finally come out with some larger capacity batteries. They do have a five amp hour. Um, and then this is a two amp hour, but I also have a three amp hour that we're gonna be running on it for the test today. All right, so now when it comes to competitors for these two lines, um, one of the most common ones that's been around for actually quite a while and, and actually preceded both of these is the Bosch 12 volt Flexi Click. Now I don't own that. 
it's because Bosch has also released an 18 volt flexi click and that is the one I decided to pick up. Now, why did I need an 18 volt? Well, one thing I was intrigued about is, is the 18 volt going to make a difference or am I just going to find myself wishing that I had a smaller tool? Well, I think the opposite is true is I think there are times when you're using one of these tools and all the ergonomics and the flexibility of it is great, but you wish it just had a little bit more power. Now, power numbers, we're gonna have shown them on the screen by this point, but this one has got almost twice the amount of torque that the other ones have. It has higher speeds as well, and so it is more comparable to just your standard 18 volt drill. Um, in fact, it's actually higher powered than some of the Bosch 18 volt drills that you can get, and right in line with some of the other mid-tier drill drivers or compact drill drivers. Now, with the Bosch, you are getting a step up in quality, in my opinion, in terms of the, or the robust qualities of these connections. We'll show you right here. It is just a solid hunk of metal. I talked about this in kind of the first unboxing or initial unboxing, but it is a really solid and well-built tool. Now, the right angle does have a plastic outer chuck, but both of these chucks are actually half inch diameter chucks. And so it does allow you to put a bigger bit in there, something that you cannot do on the 12 volt tools. You're restricted to the three eighths inch size. So the bigger tool does allow you to run bigger bits, which should make it have more flexibility. And then just like the other one, you do have the offset that is allowed. Now the one big difference between these tools is instead of having a dedicated quarter inch hex collet that you put on there, it actually just does have it incorporated. Now, when we start discussing things that we don't like, one of the things I don't like about this one is the fact that it works opposite of every collet. I've mentioned this in the other video. It is something that I'm gonna continually harp on, just like I harp on the speeds or the forward and reverse selector for the Milwaukee, because you just have something that is different than any other tool you're going to use. And so because of that, it's not natural to you. And so it always feels like you're having to try and force yourself to work in a way that's opposite what's intuitive to you. Obviously with a, a larger capacity tool or an 18 volt tool, you are going to have more power in the batteries. This is obviously running their wonderful core uh, 18 volt four amp hour battery that is very small and compact, but has more modern cells, the 21700 cells. They give you a little bit more performance on most tools. So just by going up to a bigger tool and putting a bigger, although still compact battery on there, you are getting potentially more runtime, which means you're gonna have to carry less spare batteries with you. All right, so now we've shown you, we've talked about each one of the tools, we've shown you some of their specs. Now let's actually get into some real world testing and see how these tools stack up when we compare them side by side. All right, so our first test, we are gonna start with the Milwaukee. We are gonna be driving two, two and a half inch deck screws into our OSB stack. This is kind of the, the bare minimum I feel for testing. Obviously these can do uh, smaller screws. So we are running a fresh four amp hour battery um, in the Milwaukee. The one downside to that is this thing won't stand up on the battery with a chuck on the front of it to save its life now. So that is a downfall to the bigger batteries. I do prefer them but I just kind of want to see what the best case scenario is. We are going to be starting in speed two. So let's go ahead and get going with the Milwaukee. Okay, so we are only going to be timing the actual driving time of the screws. Next up, we are going to be going the five in one extreme brushless drill driver. What a name. We are running on their three amp hour battery. It does have a full charge. We are gonna be in speed two in drill mode. We are in drill mode in the Milwaukee too. All right, and now the Bosch. Um, you do run this without any sort of collet when you're just running the quarter inch hex bits. Um, we do have a full core four amp hour battery. All right, so now moving on, we are actually gonna be moving on to three and a half inch screws. All right, so now we are gonna be going with the Milwaukee. You can hear the motor start to kind of change its pace, if you will, um, on those bigger fasteners. Uh, now the DeWalt. So far between those two, the DeWalt feels snappier, and now the Bosch.
We are now going to be moving on to a five inch Spax T30 screw. All right, so first with Milwaukee, still in speed two. So we are getting a cut out. Obviously I believe it would still drive it in speed one, but we're gonna see if these others can do it and kind of start to distinguish themselves. The DeWalt cutting out a lot sooner. Now let's see the Bosch. So as you can tell, um, we are starting to see a separation here. Milwaukee doesn't seem to be liking life tonight. All right, so now we are down in speed one on the Milwaukee. We are gonna be going with first with a six inch and an eight inch timber lock. If we get out a cut out here, this will kind of be the fail point on the driving test, obviously. <laughs> We still got a full battery. There is a smell coming from the Milwaukee. Um, you know, it's a two year old tool, but I wouldn't expect that to be its kind of breaking point. It's not hot to the touch or anything. So maybe I'm just going through something here. So first with the six inch, we are in speed one, one. And now with the eight inch. So with the Bosch, we are still in speed. We are still in speed two. That should prove to be a benefit for the tool. Okay. So we did get a cutout in speed two. Let's try the eight inch, see if we get kind of similar cutout. In three, two, one. And I don't know if you can see that, but we have some serious smoke escaping from the Bosch. Now, this was a refurbished tool. I do not feel, however, that we are pushing it beyond what is reasonable. All right, so at this point in time, I actually had plans to do some more drilling, testing, and do some other things, but we got an odd smell coming out of the Milwaukee, which is not normal for it. Um, it's not incredibly hot, but there is an odd smell. Uh, something that I've never had before. And then we had the smoke coming out of the Bosch. This tool felt like new when I got it. It had not been used. So I'm hesitant to say that this is something to do with the refurbished part of the tool. It is a little bit warmer. Um, it was running fine until we did the six and the eight inch timber lock, which in my opinion, timber locks, yeah, they're big long screws, but they're not exactly the most challenging things in the world. Is that what these tools are meant for? Well, definitely the 12 volt tools, I would say no, that's not traditionally what you're gonna be using them for. So we did probably push them more than what they were designed for. Um, for smaller fasteners or stuff around the house, assembling different Ikea furnitures, or even just doing kind of standard installs, I think you're gonna be fine. Um, even in cabinet installs, I don't know that you're driving much more than maybe a three or a four inch screw, depending on what you're attaching uh, to the wall. Typically you're doing some smaller screws. Um, and so I think for those types of jobs, they're gonna be fine. The outcome of this video is not necessarily what I would have expected. It's not what I was hoping for. I was actually hoping to showcase these as being, you know, the greatest tool that you could put in your arsenal. And unfortunately, they didn't really show it today. You know, that's, that's part of the reality of the tool world is sometimes tools do let you down. These, t these tests today were disappointing to me in that I don't think they truly have indicated what I've been able to use these tools for. I, I do love these multi-chuck drill drivers. The Milwaukee has been faithfully by my side for the better part of two years. I believe I got it in April of 2020 right at the beginning of COVID. It was one of the things I bought to try and cheer myself up uh, from all the isolation we were having and cheer me up it did. 
Um, this is a great tool. I hope we do see a Gen 2 at some point with some improvements on it. All right, at the end of the day, video didn't go how I thought it would, but I hope you still found some value in it. If you have any questions or comments regarding any of these tools, go ahead and leave them down in the comments below. Also, if you want to, let me know what your experience is using some of these tools and see if you've had similar situations or see if you've had nothing but success with them. Let me know what you think. If you like the video, go ahead and smash that like button. Let YouTube know that you like what you saw. And if you don't mind, take a minute to subscribe if you're not already uh, so you can be notified when I release new videos. So thanks for watching the video. This has been Tinker with Tools and I'll catch you next time.